नमस्कार ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू गोवा वेलकम टू दिन्यू ऑफ दी गोवा मैरिटाइम कॉन्क्लेव दिस इज दी फोर्थ एडिशन ऑफ दी दिस इज दिस इज द फोर्थ एडिशन ऑफ दी गोवा मैरिटाइम कॉन्क्लेव एंड यू हैव सीन दैट विथ एवरी सक्सेसिव Conclave. There have been, you know, uh, greater and greater uh, improvement in the cooperation, collaboration, and in the output that uh, we are aiming for. Uh, for example, the last uh, conclave, uh, conclave at Berg on finding the uh, common maritime. And thereafter, in this conclave, we are looking at uh, generating the uh, collaborative uh, mitigating frameworks for mitigating those uh, natural products that have been identified. So, this uh, Goa Maritime Conclave is basically uh, a way of taking forward the Government of India's uh, vision, the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister of uh, Sagar. Articulation 2015. We have been pursuing this. Uh, the Navy has been taking this forward from from the, uh, the direction, and uh, we see this as a very important uh, policy directive for us, by which we cooperate, we engage with all the partners in the uh, in the region. And the aim of this uh, is also to find regional uh, solutions to regional problems. Because uh, while there are larger constructs, I would say like the Indian Ocean Naval Symposium, the Iora, Beamstack, many of these uh, larger constructs are there. But uh, uh, in, the, uh, in a smaller construct like the GMC, we are able to come together. Bring out the problem and try and address it in a, in a holistic manner through intense discussion. So when the numbers are a little smaller, it is also easier to uh, arrive at a, you know, a workable solution in a faster time frame. So there are a lot of advantages of this uh, of this conflict, and uh, you see uh, we now have you know. Well, friendly foreign countries participating in it. We are the 13th one, and uh, the oceans uh, provide a challenge. They really uh, do not uh, provide for the night. And uh, in our discussions also, every time what comes up is how do you generate trust you know, between the uh, countries and the. Operate in the maritime domain. Uh, our honorable prime minister also uh, articulated that it's a common heritage. The oceans are a common heritage of mankind, and therefore we need to uh, look after it, we have to protect it, and see that it is secure. Uh, the, uh, the domain is very, very important for us, uh, not just uh, as a country, but for the region. And, uh, Articulating the fact that you know, India is looking to grow, but not grow alone, but grow as a region. That is, take everybody along, and benefits must, uh, the growth must benefit all countries, all friendly foreign countries. So that is uh, the essence of uh, this GMC. Uh, and uh, if you have any uh, specific questions to ask, I'm you know related to the GMC. ये जो चैलेंजेस जो हम फेस करते हैं वो एक्चुअली काफी कॉमन है क्योंकि हमारा जो प्रॉब्लम्स है उसका बोलते हैं प्रॉब्लम्स विदाउट पासपोर्ट 
मतलब मानपुर ने जी एक प्रॉब्लम आपके देश से हमारे देश आने के लिए वो ऐसे आ जाएगा फ्रो द बैटरूम तो में तो क्या प्रॉब्लम्स है ये पायरेसी ड्रग ट्रैफिकिंग आम स्मगलिंग टेररिज्म इलीगल माइग्रेशन ये सब बिना पासपोर्ट के साथ वो दोष बैटरूम तो से आ जाता है तो इसको टैकल करने के लिए कोई भी देश के पास जितना रिसोर्स चाहिए वो होगा ही नहीं तो इसलिए कोऑपरेशन चाहिए कलाब्रेट चाहिए इंफॉर्मेशन एक्सचेंज करेंगे तो ये सब करके ये प्रॉब्लम्स को सॉल्व तो नहीं कर सकते लेकिन डेफिनेटली इसको कंट्रोल कर सकते हैं और इसको मिटिगेट कर सकते हैं इसलिए ये सब आ जाते हैं मतलब एक साथ मिल काम करेंगे करते हैं ये एक्सी वगैरह ऐसे वर्क करते हैं कि सोशल प्लेटफॉर्म क्योंकि लोगों के लिए कैसे हेल्प इवन कोई टाइम पे भी एम सी इतना हेल्पफुल हुआ तो ये इसका एक पिलर है ह्यूमैनिटेरियन असिस्टेंस एंड डिजास्टर रिलीफ तो जैसे कोविड के टाइम पे हमारे जो जी एम सी के देश जो है उनको हमने मदद किया था वैक्सीन मेडिसिन ऑक्सीजन ये सब और जो मास्क वगैरह जो आइटम्स हम दे सकते हैं या जो मदद कर सकते हैं फिर कई हमारे देश के लोग उधर स्टैंडर्ड हो गए थे उनको भी लेके आ गया वापस तो ये सब कोऑपरेशन से ही हुआ तो इसे कॉन्क्लेव जब होते हैं तो वी डिस्कस ऑल दिस मैटर्स लाइक कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग कैपिटली डेवलपमेंट दिन ट्रेनिंग एक्सरसाइजेस सो जब सिस्टम होता है और नॉर्मल सिचुएशन होता है तब ये सब चलता रहता है तो बाई डूइंग ऑल दिस ट्रस्ट जनरेट हो जाता है मतलब ओवर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम और ट्रस्ट एक चीज़ है कि यू कैन डेवलप ओवर नाइट मतलब इफ यू डोंट हैव ट्रस्ट आई कॉन्ट से कि टमोरो यू विल हैव ट्रस्ट यू हैव टू you know make friends work with them and uh, develop it over you know many many years so that is the effort of conclaves uh, like this and then we all come together we have uh, six countries ke senior very very senior leadership like the heads of uh, the maritime agencies and uh, in fact tomorrow's uh, day defense minister we have the baki very baki six countries ke Trying to do in Goa Maritime Conclave is what we are trying to do is to find a solution. 
solution, the regional solution to a regional problem. Because your problem, Indo-Pacific can address that same template may not be you know, applicable in the international region. Because you know, that, 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 that the problems we face, Amara, like uh, this Indian Ocean region particularly is very prone to uh, disasters, whether it is cyclone or earthquakes or tsunamis and all that. So, here our problem is challenging and difficult. So, we have to come together to solve our problem. So, that is why, and the uh, other advantage is that if we are in a smaller group, it is easier to come to solutions and uh, decisions as compared to being in a much larger area. Uh, say 25 countries or you know eight observers are there uh, like in the WPNS or in the Indonesian Naval Symposium or with agreement may have to come more time but now you have you know 10-12 countries is much easier. So the last question. Sir, sir uh, GNC has grown in the last four editions and three specific teams or three which have come up as a platform is information sharing and the essentially capacity building and what is the roadmap of the idea in the past? The roadmap that you are looking for, the framework that you are looking for, as a platform? No, so last time we had identified what are the priorities. So therefore this time we are working towards trying to make a framework. So mitigating frameworks are required. So the challenges are more or less now very clear. Like when you talk of IOU fishing in this Indian Ocean region, Tuna is a big problem. And where the fishing is, our exclusive economic zone is not coming into it. It will come or it will come very low. But we can use it as a tractor and take it as an action. But the area in the international waters which is beyond the exclusive economic zone, ये आईयूयू फिशिंग का प्रॉब्लम वहाँ सबसे ज़्यादा है और हमारे जो इंडोनेशियन रीजन में इसके लिए कोई अभी तक कोई फ्रेमवर्क नहीं है बाकी दुनिया के बाकी एरियाज़ में कुछ कहने पे ही और कुछ ना कुछ फ्रेमवर्क है तो इसलिए हम लोग अब इसके ऊपर काम चर्चा करेंगे और कुछ फ्रेमवर्क बनाने का प्रोग्राम है
फ्रेंडली कंट्री से उनको दे सकते हैं और खरीद सकते हैं और उसका मेंटेनेंस वगैरह भी आसान होगा क्योंकि वी आर द सेम रीजन ठीक है थैंक यू देर आर टैक्स एंड पॉसिबिलिटीज विच आर बियॉन्ड टाइम and when we look at this particular region which is indian ocean region this region represents our civilizational connects and civilizational contacts which are very very deep and uh, india was never an expansionist nation so <clears throat> the natives are always part of family So when I see around, I look around, I feel we are all part of the same family, which is Indian Ocean family. And this Indian Ocean family has to work together. Whatever happened in history, we and there are lessons to be learned in history, lessons to be learned from recent history of pandemic, where supply chain management itself became a challenge for humanity. Lesson in time as to what is happening. right now across and uh, the conflicts are leading to hardships to everyone and this particular region which represents about 40% of global population still are one of the nations which are fighting poverty and since challenges to battle and fight poverty as a political person as a part of the government the job of the government is to look after the needs of people in terms of food <coughs> fuel and fertilizer the food fuel and fertilizer cannot be provided until and unless the trade routes are secure and the trade routes of this particular region are in the form of about half of the container trade of the world is happening in this region one third of um, uh, bulk trade is happening in this region and two third of oil transport is happening in this region this is how important the sea routes are and with this in mind this background in mind that all of us together are representing 40% of humanity uh one third of bulk or cargo trade half of uh, container trade and two third of oil trade it the relevance is just apparent by the numbers which one is seeing right now the trade and commerce cannot prosper until unless safety and security is provided for and for providing the safety and security at the sea obviously the navies of the region have to come together and work together going back to the initial statement which i made and that is the theme that we are representing global south and global south means countries which are economically more vulnerable than others i would call it less developed because i think we are very developed nations by virtue of the ancient countries but definitely economically uh, we need to do better and we cannot do better until unless trade and commerce improves uh, with all the geo strategic equations which are changing the world with all the challenges that we are faced with the global south definitely has to come together to fight the impoverishment of its people to have the policies in place where our people are protected and their basic requirements are met in terms of food and security and thus cooperation is the way forward cooperation amongst the governments cooperation amongst the navies cooperation in trade and commerce and hence this is a very timely conference and it unless we can ensure safety and security no trade and commerce or economic relationship will prosper for trade and commerce to prosper i would say that we were continuously working with each other when the world 
Munich clause did not exist. Like the UN Convention on Laws of the Seas was not there. This came in only in 80s, 1982 or so, which is more or less like a constitution of the seas. So we know that the baseline of engagement has to be in terms of UN clause, UN uh, Convention of Laws of the Seas. But even with this framework, the region has its own aspirations. Region needs to have its own working methodology. Region needs to come together and cooperate with each other. Thus, cooperation requires multi-level of engagement. And that multi-level of engagement, from my perspective, could be governance, which means administrative mechanism, modernization, which we all need to work with changing time, energy requirements, uh, challenges of safety and security, and of course the safety and security which all of you provide us. On behalf of 1.4 billion Indians, I can definitely make a statement that we are really proud of the work that our Navy does. When we look around, our Navy in this region is work and showcase their skills at the sea by virtue of being the first responder in so many climatic conditions and so many other changes which are taking place across the globe. They have given us a sense of safety and security at sea, not only to us, but all the things which are happening around us. So when we look at the challenges which all of you need to cooperate and work together, I would say there are some traditional challenges and there are non-traditional challenges. So traditional challenges, uh, climate worsening, sea level rising, oil spills happening, etc., etc., are the, or tsunami happening, uh, the, the seashores getting depleted. These are the traditional cha challenges or, or wars, uh, unstable region because of uh, stability, political stability issues in the region. We, we all understand these are traditional challenges which everyone uh, is faced with and you are very good at handling because uh, uh, one has done this kind of job for a very long time. But the non-traditional challenges, I don't know how well uh, one is prepared for that. We all know that sea is used for terrorism. So counter-terrorism mechanisms and processes need to be in place. We all know, and we've seen it in multiple cases, of sea being used for smuggling narcotics, which itself is a challenge, which the world is faced with, and India as a country is faced with. And I'm sure surrounding regions, everybody in Indian Ocean region is facing that. We are faced with uh, war situations to bring a lot of illegal migrations also. IUU uh, fishing which is illegal, unreported and unregistered. We, we all understand that fishing itself is causing not just the uh, worsening of climatic conditions or uh, sea but we also understand it is damaging the economies, it is damaging the very seas which we wish to protect and occupy. So, modern challenges need to be handled in a modern manner because the challenges are such which are having multi layered impact on the stability of the region and stability of the countries and also uh, people who are dependent on sea for their daily living, they are getting impacted. And the wrong forces are taking over the seas and impeding the stability of the region itself. So why trade and commerce is relevant, but breaching trade and commerce and some uh, incentivized people are engaging in the Ill illegal and illegitimate activity. Uh, more like a, um, I would, if I can compare land and sea uh, territorially, I would say it's more like a policing job also which navies have to engage in. Navies have to train coast guards, navies have to work with coast guards, navies have to work with the regional powers 
to manage or police the region because ocean itself is a territory. And that territory can be misused because borders are not physically seen or uh, noticed. When we look at this region, we also look at that Indian Ocean and the um, Indo-Pacific for that matter. Because that, I, it, in my uh, imagination, Indian Ocean is an extension of Indo-Pacific or Indo-Pacific is extension of Indian Ocean. Both ways. They are both complementary and they are running into each other. In the absence of the physical boundary as we are used to on the on, on land, it's not that physical boundary, but we know each flows into the other. And when we protect one, it is protecting the other. When we misuse one region, it is harming the other. So in the Indo, uh, uh, Indo-Pacific and in, in Indian Ocean itself are a corollary of each other. And what happens in Indo-Pacific, in my assessment, will determine where our civilization goes further, or what, what is the future of humanity as such. Because it is Indo-Pacific, the, the open seas, the free trade, rule of law, which will judge what really truly happens in the world because uh, there's, a, there's a saying, a spark neglected burns the house. So neglecting any region can cause the kind of damage to humanity which uh, I don't think humanity can ever recover from because the, whether it's in terms of technological advancement or the weaponization programs, uh, this region is the one which holds uh, a huge potential. Uh, if it holds potential for economic well-being, it also holds potential if neglected to lead to other consequences, which I don't think anybody is prepared for. So I would say that when we look at Indo-Pacific, uh, we are looking at three continents. We are looking at uh, Asia, Africa, uh, Australia, Oceania, uh, and we are also looking at so many island nations in this particular region. So a big landmass also is involved, a large population is part of this region, close to 50% of the global population is habited in this region, and uh, thus protecting this region becomes a, a duty uh, of everyone uh, who wishes well for the humanity and mankind. And uh, stability, political stability in this region also uh, is a challenge, but we wish as Indian, uh, as government of India and as uh, democratic uh, polity that we want uh, each country to prosper. Uh, their well-being is our well-being. And uh, neighborhood first policy is what we adopt. And I go back to my initial thing. I don't even look at this region or these countries as neighbors. I look at it as extended family because in time they are all our people and we all belong to each other. And because we all belong to each other and historically we've been together, it's time that our engagements increase. It's time we start cooperating. And if we have to fight and battle these challenges, it's more and more important that cooperation becomes the key of our existence. Until unless we cooperate with each other, uh, it will, uh, the required action plan will not take place. And if we look at this region deeply, we also understand that there are sub-regions. Within the region, uh, at, at large, there are sub-regions. For example, Bay of Bengal. So Bay of Bengal is a region in itself. And Bay of Bengal has come up with an institutional framework of engagement which is BIMSTEC. And India is very much part of the BIMSTEC. India has, is working very deeply and closely in this region uh, with other BIMSTEC nations. And I just feel that uh, whether it's at cultural level or it's at economic level or it's at uh, uh, institutional level, we need to cooperate and work together. Recently, uh, from our ministry, we held uh, 
trade facilitation uh, program for the officers from Minister country. So, what I was saying that there are challenges of governance. The challenges of governance are that if you start trading, if you start working together more and more, the formalization of systems is what we need. The customs, the tariffs, the uh, post, uh, methodology of taxation. So, unless from administrative perspective or protocols or uh, shipping protocols or docking protocols. Until unless we have similar processes, so we have to, uh, the cooperation becomes a challenge. So I would request that we all follow the path of cooperation and building up the capacity of the officers handling the civilian part of the job. We, from, right from taxation to shipping to building ships, logistic chain management, so capacity building of the people who will finally be handling things on the post and the ground is what is needed. And India has taken a lead in providing that uh, capacity building workshop. So we did have one capacity building workshop and I feel we can, we can continue to do more and maybe the, the college itself, the law college which has arranged this um, workshop can also be part of it or they could be a part of syllabus or some composite working plan that we bring in all our different forms of administration into a common consolidated, common book, common protocols, common way of functioning, common language, which will help uh, in terms of cooperation at the sea and cooperation at uh, 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 working platforms. The second aspect... Our office know that the relationship between the humans and persons is multifaceted. Often characterized by a dual nature that encompasses independence and vulnerability as well as preservation and exploitation. Friends, oceans have always appealed to human imagination. Oceans are undeniably majestic and overwhelming. Their sheer size commands respect and admiration from all who contemplate their grandeur. Their role in supporting biodiversity, food production, climate regulation, and numerous other vital functions cannot be overstated. Oceans have been instrumental in the evolution of civilization by promoting trade, cultural exchange, providing resources, sustenance, etc. Trans Indian Ocean on violence has circled well across millennia. We interacted with each other and learned new and useful things from each other. We traded with each other and became prosperous. But like most things in life, even oceans are not unmixed blessings. Friends, it was just a few centuries ago that a serious problem of colonial and domination confronted our societies. During that period, our contact with colonial powers was mostly through the oceans. Colonialism was greatly facilitated by the use of oceans as highways of exploration and the conquest. The ab ability to navigate and control the vast expanses of water allowed colonial powers to extend their influence and established overseas empires that shaped the course of human history. Friends, but we fought back. Our society struggled against the colonial systems and our mitigation efforts flowered into our national movements. If we try to analyze the causes of subjugation of colonized people, one of the main reasons was the lack of shared framework among the countries to mitigate the impact of colonialism. Later, our national movements formulated a shared framework for collaboration among themselves. These national movements sought solidarity, support and cooperation with other movements and nations that shared their goals. The leaders of these national movements often shared ideology, learning 
and especially with each other. That is our mitigation framework collaborated and it is now most successfully thereby confining colonialism to the dustbin of history. That brings to the theme of my address, convening common maritime priority into collaborative mitigation frameworks. And how do we collaborate towards achieving our common maritime priority? Firstly, we have to work out and agree about our common priorities. Friends, a free, open and rules-based bound maritime order is a priority for all of us. My design has no place in such a maritime order. Respect for international maritime law as initiated in Arkla 1982 must be our lodaster. Within this broad framework, many more concrete priorities can be fleshed up. Preservation of natural resources, anti piracy operations, disaster resilience, and mitigation are some of the things that readily come to mind. With a com common maritime priority delineated, how do we put in place collaborative mitigation frameworks? The answer is simple and complex at the same time. We collaborate, we work together and we share resources and expertise. But there being no free lunch in the world we live in, collaboration has cost for all of us. At times, conflict and non-cooperation appears more beneficial in terms of our, of, of our immediate, narrow and unenlightened self-interest. So, why cooperate and collaborate when competition is seemingly more beneficial to us individually? Friend, it is only half of the story of the world we live in and it indeed it is deceptively straightforward but he was technically misleading. The strategic interaction of nations in the international affairs can benefit from the game theoretic analysis which has become an integral part of microeconomy. Friend, I have been a lecturer and have taught physics at the college level also. Friend, allow me to give you a brief tutorial on prisoner's dilemma which is a classic exposition of benefits of collaboration as compared to competition. Two prisoners held separately by police without any communication between them have to decide individually whether to confess or not. If both confess, both get a medium level punishment and if both refuse to confess, both get light punishment. However, if one confesses and the other does not, the confessing prisoner goes out without any punishment while the other one gets a heavy punishment. Friend, a very small amount of thought would make it clear that both prisoners lacking any communication and trust between them would confess and get medium punishment. This is the case of non-cooperative interaction between the two prisoners, leading to medium level punishment for both. However, if the two prisoners trust each other, they will optimally decide not to confess, leading to a cooperative interaction and a light punishment. Friends, this concept of the prisoner's dilemma, when applied in the domain of international relations, can explain and analyze various situations where countries face strategic decision-making challenges. For example, when two or more countries engage in an arms race, they often do so out of mutual fear and distrust. Each country wants to increase its military capabilities to ensure its security as it believes that other countries are increasing their military capabilities. This leads to a sub-optimal arms race to the detriment of all the countries. However, if all the countries cooperate by reducing their military spending, 
they could collectively achieve greater security and save resources for other needs. The dilemma arises from the fear that if one country decreases the military spending while others do not, it may be left vulnerable. Friend, the concept of the prisoner's dilemma can also be applied to the sustainable use of resources by countries. This is theoretically known as a tragedy of the commons. For example, fishing in a region, the sustainable use of this resource benefits all countries in the long run. Each country must decide whether to exploit the fishery at a high rate to maximize its immediate gains or to limit its exploitation to ensure the resources long term availability. The dilemma arises because if one country is used to exploit this resource intensively while the others cooperate by using it sustainably, the exploiting country may reap large and unfair benefits. But in the long run, harm the resource by inducing other countries to do the same, ultimately affecting everyone negatively. Friends, in the two examples mentioned by me, the prisoner's dilemma illustrates the tension between the narrow national self-interest and the mutual benefit based on enlightened self-interest of all nations. The optimal outcome often involves cooperation and building trust among nations, but the fear of being taken advantage of or acting alone in the hostile world can lead to suboptimal decisions. The challenge is to find solutions that promote cooperation, build trust, and mitigate the risk associated with the prisoner's dilemma situations in international relations. <coughs> Hence, it is important for the country to build trust between them so that optimally collaborative interaction is possible for our mitigation frameworks. Friends, how do we build trust? We build trust through dialogues. Such as Goa Maritime Conclave, joint exercises, industrial collaboration, sharing of resources, respecting international law, etc. The lesson is that trust among cooperating countries would lead to optimal outcomes in respect of our common maritime priorities. Since our countries interact with each other repeatedly on a multitude of issues, it is possible to build trust by discussion and consultation, as well as by consistently acting in consort with each other. In fact, the game theory itself has a theoretical basis of such cooperative optimal equilibrium based on the trust developed through repeated interaction. In India, we say, Sangha Shakti Kaluri, a Sanskrit adage that is proudly translated as, in the present era, a strength lies in cooperation and collaboration. Friends, the point I want to make is that cooperative equilibrium can also be achieved in international relations. In our context, common maritime priorities such as tackling climate change, controlling piracy, terrorism, drug trafficking, and overfishing, freedom of powers on high sea, etc., need to be addressed by all of us cooperatively by avoiding ruins per se of selfish goals, which would make the reason less secure and less prosperous. If the threat that we face are supranational, it is no point in fact, international efforts to address them would indeed have limited effects. The regional challenges can, to the best of my understanding, be managed through multinational collaborative mitigation frameworks. Friends, in our region, illegal, unreported, and unregulated of our IU fishing is a challenge which relates to resource over exploitation. IUU fishing certain ocean ecosystems and such level
Fifi. Friends, it also threatens our economic security and regional and global food security. It is our common maritime power priority to control IUU fishing and doing so would require all of us to work together. A multinational collaborative effort for compilation, coalition and sharing of surveillance data is the need of the hour. It will help in identifying actors with irregular or certain behavior which it will have to be countered resolutely. Friends, a collaborative mitigation framework in the context of a climate change involves countries working together to reduce carbon emissions and transition to sustainable practices. The previous dilemma presents the temptation for individual countries to free ride or avoid climate responsibility while other countries bear the pain to reduce their emissions. But such narrow thinking and selfish actions are infectious in nature and the pandemic of climate irresponsibility may threaten the very existence of our society. Friends, like the pandemic we just overcame, there is also a vaccine available. It is a vaccine of collaboration, climate responsibility and climate justice. If all countries accept the responsibility to cut emission by investing in green economy, share technology and capital with the needy countries and so on, there is no reason why humanity cannot overcome this problem as well. Friends, another pertinent priority in the respect of international maritime law as provided in UNCLOS 1982. Friends, our narrow immediate interest may tempt us to throw or disregard the well-established international law, but doing so would lead to the breakdown of our civilized maritime intercourse. The law of general would be the result of such narrowness. Again, our common security and prosperity cannot be preserved without all of us committing cooperatively adhere to the legitimate maritime rules of engagement. Fair and just rules of engagement are crucial for fostering such collaboration and ensuring that no single country dominates other in hegemonic manner. Friends, for all of us, the Indian Ocean region, the sea, has saved our history since the immemorial. It continues to influence our lives today and it will shape our shared history in the future. I have no hesitation in saying that if we cooperate and collaborate, the future of our region holds immense promise. Friends, the Goa Maritime Conflict is a step in that direction of cooperation, collaboration, discussion and dialogue. I wish the conflict all the success and look forward to your valuable insights. May GMC grow in its strength and stature. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I now request the Chief of the Naval Staff Indian Navy to present a memento to the Honorable Raksha Mansi of India, Sri Rajnath Singh. That, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the conclusion of our proceedings prior to lunch. May I request our distinguished guests to proceed for lunch at the designated venue. Thank you.
सर ये दो जहाज है जो हमने ऑलरेडी एक्सपोर्ट किए हैं ये फास्ट पेट्रोल वेसल ये सेशल्स को दिया है और ये मॉरिशस को दिया है सर ओपी वी सर और ये दो मैक्सिमम को मॉरिशस को यस और यही जहाज है जो कितना दिया एक एक दिया है सर और हम उनको फॉलो ऑन कर रहे हैं कास्ट कितनी है लगभग सर इसका सिक्सटी करोड़ है ये सर हमने उनसे काफ़ी बात की है सर बर्न दो बार बात की उसको फॉलो ऑन करके जाना है एशिया में भी प्रोजेक्ट आने वाला है एल सी एम 